हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू स्मार्ट वर्ल्ड अ स्कूल ऑफ एजुकेशन लेट्स स्टार्ट हिस्ट्री चैप्टर वन स्टेट्स आफ्टर मयूर एम्पायर इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द शुंगा डायनेस्टी द इंडो ग्रीक किंग्स द कुशाना किंग्स द गुप्ता डायनेस्टी the vardhan dynasty the powers in north east india the shunga dynasty after empire ashoka the maurya powers started decline the last maurya empire was called as brihadrastha the maurya general ushamitra shunga revolted against the Vihadatra killed him and became king himself. The Indo Greek kings during this period there were several small kingdoms ruled by Greek kings to the north west of the Indian subcontinent. Those kings are called as Indo Greek kings. In the history of coins of ancient India. the coins of these kings are very important they had a tradition of putting the picture of king on one side and that of deity on the other side this tradition later took root in india one of the famous indo greek kings was menander who discussed buddhist philosophy with the buddhist picture the nagasena the menander is also referred to as the milinda the question that he discussed with bhikshu nagasena led to creation of the book milinda pana the pali word pana means question the silver call of milinda both side the kushana kings india was invaded from time to time by several tribes the kushanas were one such tribe from central asia they were established the rule in the northwestern region and in kashmir in the first century c the kushana kings were the first to start minting of gold coins in india they started the custom of putting the images of gautam buddha in different indian dignities on the coins the kushan kings kaniksha extended the empire empire kaniksha kaniksha's empire extended from kapul in the west to varanasi in the east gold and copper coins minted by him have been found in north india the fourth buddhist council was held in kashmir during his reign he established the city of kaniksha in kashmir it is believed that the village of kampur near srinagar today could be the kaniksha kampur the well known poet ashok goswami during the reign of kaniksha he wrote the text uttar charitra and the jal shuk the famous vidya sharak was also in the kaniksha court a gold coin of the kaniksha do you know kaniksha gold coin it was minted by empire kaniksha it has the words saho nano saho kaniksha ki kosno on one side which means the king of kings empire kaniksha kushan on the other side there is an image of gautam buddha and the word bodo means buddha written in the greek script this is the gold coin of the country eight point four the gupta dynasty the end of the third century c b saw the rise of gupta dynasty in north india the guptas remained in power for nearly three centuries the shukupta was the founder of the gupta dynasty the samudra gupta and the chandra gupta second were the notable kings of the gupta dynasty samudra gupta 
The expansion of the Gupta Empire began during the return of the Chandragupta I. Vishan Samudra Gupta defeated the smaller neighboring kingdoms and expanded the empire further. In his time, the Gupta Empire spread from Assam up to Arpanja. He had also conquered the eastern coastal region up to Kachi. Kanchi in Tamil Nadu, due to these victories, his power came to be recognized everywhere. As a result, kings on the northwestern frontliners, as well as those in Sri Lanka, made treaties of friendship with him. A pillar inscription at the Prayag describes Samudra Gupta's conquests and victories. This inscription is known as the Prayag Prashanti and also as the Allah part pressure. It was an it was an expert when a player. He maintained coins which had a variety of images in favor on him. In one of them he has seen been playing the Vina. He said Samudra Bhakta is in favor on it. He sees the gold coin of Samudra Bhakta. Samudra Gupta II. After the Samudra Gupta, his son Chandra Gupta II ascended the throne. He extended the Gupta Empire towards the northeast. His army he also won the Malwa, Gujarat, and the Saurashtra. He established good relations with the powerful Wakand rulers in the south by giving his daughter Pradhanti in marriage to the Rudra Sen II. There is an iron pillar at the Maha Juli near Delhi. It has not rusted even in the course of the last 1500 years. It is an excellent specimen of the metallurgic skill of the ancient Indian people. The inscription on the pillar bears the name of king called the Chandra. It is on this basis that the iron pillar is assumed to be one of the period of Chandra. Do you know Chinese traveler Pa Hinth came to India during the region of Chandra II? In the traveler, he has described the social life during the Gupta period. He says that the Indian cities are big and prosperous. There are several guest houses for travelers, also several charitable organizations. The city has hospitals where the poor get medical treatment. Free of charge, there are great vihas and temples. People are free to choose any occupation. They move about freely. There are no restrictions on their movement. Government officers and soldiers are paid their salaries regularly. People do not think or comment violence. The administration of Gupta rule is conducted in proper and effective manner. In this period, the Buddha Bhikshuku Fahili came to India from China. He had written an account of his travels in India. From his writing, we learn about the efficient administrator of the Gupta Empire, the Vartan descent. With the decline of the Gupta power, many states emerged in North India. The Vartan Dynasty was one of them. The Pratankar Bardhan was the king of Thanesha near Delhi. The Varadhan dynasty was founded by him. His son Harshavardhan expanded the Varadhan Empire up to Nepal in the north, up to the river Narmada in the south, and Assam in the east, and Gujarat in the west. He had cordial relations with the Raja. Bhaskara, Bhaskara of the country, it means ancient Assam. He had also established friendly relations with the Empire of China and even sent his ambassador to the Chinese court. The capital of Harshadhan's empire was the Kanani. Great flourished during his future. He spent a large portion of his renew of the welfare of people. Every five years, he would distribute all his wealth among the people. The court 
पोळे पाना भक्ता ड्रोट द हरिशच्या चरित्र अफिला सपे ऑफ एम्पायर हरिश हर्षवर्धन हीच टेक्स्ट प्रोवाइड्स इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन लाईफ अँड अचिवमेंट ऑफ हर्षवर्धन हर्षवर्धन हॅड बिके ऑफ फॉलोअर ऑफ बुद्धिझम द खेव जनरस पॅट्रिओनस टू अदर रिलिजन टू ही रोट थ्री संस्कृत बुक्स द रत्नावी अँड द नागान अँड द प्रिया दर्शित द बुद्ध द बुद्धिस्त बिकू युवन चॉन हॅड केम टू इंडिया फ्रॉम द चायना ड्युरिंग हिज रेजी ही ट्रॅव्हल टू द ऑल पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया ही स्टेड ॲट द नागानंद युनिव्हर्सिटी फॉर टू इयर्स ऑन द रिटनिंग ऑफ हिज होमलँड ही ट्रान्सलेटेड मेनी बुद्धिस्ट मॅन्युस्क्रिप्ट इन टू चायनीज हिज द युवन चॉन Do you know the Yon Chon traveled all over India? He had words of praise for the people of Maharashtra. He writes, the people of Maharashtra are proud people. They never forget a favor done to them, but they do not spare anyone who insults. They will help another in distress without care even for their own life. They do not harm anyone who takes refuge with them. This is the Nalanda University. Powers in Northeast India A story in Maharashtra tells about the marriage of Arjuna and Ullu, the princess of Manipur state in East India, the state of Kamrup, emerged in the 4th century C. It was established by the Pusharan's name has been mentioned in the pillar inscription of Samudra Gupta at the Alabad. Many inscriptions of the Kambu kings are available. The epic Maharash, Mahabharata and Ramayana use the name the Prayag Josti for the Kambu. The capital of the state was the Prayag Jyoti Shapur. Today we know it as the city of Guwahati in Assam. In the book, in the book, very plus of the Eritrean Sea, the Kamrup is mentioned as Kirahadiya or the region of the Kirit people. The Kamrup kingdom extended in the Brahmaputra river, Basin, Bhutan, some parts of Bengal and Bihar. During the region of the people, Vaskaravaran, the Yon Chon has visited Kamri. In this chapter, we learned about different kingdoms in North India that emerged in the period after the Mauryas. Similarly, we also learned about the situation in the northeastern part of India. during that period in the next chapter we will get acquainted with the kingdoms of south of the sampi same period do you know according to the indian tradition kashmir was known as kashanapur papur in ancient times greek historian have mentioned is by the names of the Kashyapa Yors, the Kashyapa Yors and the Kashperia. There is a mention that the Kampos dynasty ruled there during the period of the Mahabharata. During Empire Ashoka's period, Kashmir had become part of Maurya Empire. In the 7th century C, Kashmir was ruled by the Karyot dynasty. Kalahan has written about it in his book, Rajitarangi. Can you tell the kings who started the minting of gold coin in India? The city established by the Kanishka in Kashmir. The king who played the Vina 
the another name for the kamru observe the map in lesson list the name of modern cities which were part of the gupta empire discuss and write the empire kanishka the iron pillar at the meharu make a list of the various books and authors mentioned in the lesson make a comparative charts of the vardhan and gupta dynasties based on the following points points are founder expansion of kingdom and empire achievements what would you do if you met foreign travelers like yan chan solve this puzzle by using this keys a word for king in indian language a chinese traveler to invent the famous indo greek king had discussion with the bauta bhikshu a poet at the court of empire harshvardhan who, who also wrote his biography chandragupta ii conquered his state neighboring gujarat across a pali word that means question the most famous indo greek king kanishka was the first empire to make this from book an ancient indian university the chinese tower yong chong stays for few years obtain one more information about the rulers of the period following the maurya period in india enact the role of ruler of your choice i hope you got this chapter thank you so much